Hello and welcome to the Weekly Wrap-Up. I'm Leon and this is Louise. This week there's even more info on Destiny's upcoming April update. We find out a little bit more about the adventures heading our way in Mass Effect Andromeda. But first, Fallout 4 details. It's frankly evil survival mode. You will die. Oh yes, you will die. Good news! Fallout 4 is getting an update. Bad news! It's all about making the game as physically painful as possible without actually sneaking bottle cap mines into your house. Yep, Fallout 4's new and ultra brutal survival mode is out next week and Bethesda's revealed a stack of new info about the free update. But what's important this time around? Sleep. That is more like it. So the list of misery, fun and survival mode is long, but highlights include no more fast travel and no more auto saving, manual saving and definitely no quick saving. In order to save your progress you'll have to find a bed and sleep for at least an hour and dependent on the kind of bed it is will depend on the amount of rest you get. So that means sleeping bags, mattresses, it's all going to change. That might mean finding an enemy though and realising you need to save and heading to the bed that you built back in the room you found in the nearest workshop then waking up. Survival mode also has a new perk, Adrenaline, that adds a bonus to your damage output and increases with more kills. Every 5 kills adds to your Adrenaline rank and adds 5% bonus damage up to a maximum of 50% extra. Bear in mind though that sleep will ruin your Adrenaline bonuses. Uh, in other ruinous, and I mean challenging features, you'll deal but also take more damage, threats won't appear in your compass, you'll get exhausted, hungry and thirsty, you'll get ill, crippled limbs won't auto heal, your carry weight's been reduced and your companions will abandon you if you don't heal them. So yeah, fun. Uh, now don't forget if you have any post-apocalyptic survival tips or thoughts on anything else in this week's show you can get in touch via Twitter at Leon Hurley, at shiny underscore demon or even at GamesRadar. Now, in other news, Left 4 Dead 2 has been added to Xbox One backwards compatibility, instantly becoming the best game on the console. Shadow of Mordor 2 appears to have been accidentally confirmed on a stunt woman's CV who's been doing CG and mocap work on the game. And the Division's first raid, known as an incursion, will be arriving on April 12th, bringing new gear and the ability to trade with other players. It looks like there's going to be quite a few changes for Mass Effect Andromeda if a recently leaked EA survey is anything to go by. Forget rampaging reapers trying to eradicate all organic life and think instead about a lost in space style plot with mankind trying to find a place to call its own. Yep, the survey says the upcoming sequel is the story of humanity's next chapter as you attempt to find a home in the Andromeda galaxy. The crucial bit of detail that it's offering is the freedom to traverse and explore a planet dense, seamless open world galaxy as you lead a squad of military trained explorers. Then there's the third person shooting and I quote deep progression and customization systems. Now there's no word where Earth is in all this but it follows from the last games that the space jumping Mass Effect relays are gone and anyone at the other side of the universe is kind of stuck there. So think the first series of Star Trek or Battlestar Galactica with mankind floating around the wrong side of the nebula surrounded by bad aliens. There's talk of a major war brewing across a galaxy of planets so no change there but it makes it clear that we are the aliens here and there's an indigenous race that doesn't want us around. Okay this race is apparently deadly so not exactly harmless space bunnies. No with a little nose and a six eyes. But there's a a very clear emphasis on the idea of us being an invading colonizing force of refugees rather than clear-cut good guys which is interesting and opens up plenty of opportunity for some serious paragon and renegade options. Now most of you are up for the idea as well although Luke Owens is clearly thinking renegade when he says nice take where to be the oppressor though. Bregan de Leon also has a dark reading so the human race is killing species on their own home to take it for themselves. However Dave Scammell is feeling more positive thinking it sounds endearingly Star Trek like and it's piqued my curiosity while Liz Morrigan Janssen says as long as it doesn't lose the great story and characters that's what what I love about it. Yeah, but seriously, those those space bunnies. Bungie has had its second Destiny livestream to explain what's coming in the big April update and we finally know what's going on with those Taken Guardians. It's not a shader or even a new subclass but a full range of armour Bungie insists on calling desolate even though they're spelling it desolate. Uh, there are some new weapons that look like Taken gear but they still operate like human weapons. It's a new collectible armour system that you can get from the new Sterling Treasure Box. You can get that from the Postmaster after completing the level 41 Prison of Elders match made activity or from the first completion of the weekly Crucible activity. Get it all and you can unlock a new special taken a moat called Shiver. And it's not the only armour, there's also new outfits called Heliopores and New Monarchy. These new sets can be customised using a new chroma system which involves collecting chroma material available in white, yellow, blue and red, consuming it along with a little glimmer to add coloured flashes to your gear. But there's more, a bunch of year one guns are making the jump to 330 attack levels. Ooh, Galahorn? Shh! <laughs> including things like Patience and Time, Two to the Morgue and Queen's Breaker's Bow. You can also get gear dropping at the new 335 light level from completing things like the Iron Banner, Trials of Osiris, Challenge of the Elders, the Court of Oryx, the hard version of King's Fall 
and some strike rewards. But perhaps the biggest news is that the infusion system will now finally make sense. Oh, thank uh, instead of light being transferred almost randomly from one thing to the next, it's now a one-to-one -one deal. Take a 335 light piece of armor, infuse it into something with a lower level, and you'll get a 335 light piece of armor at the end. Bungie hope it'll allow players more freedom to customize and personalize their guardians. No, if only I could add a hidden blade to my guardian, and they'd look much better with just, just a hood. Really. Yeah. yeah, that's it for this week. See you next week. Thank <laughs> you.